Yo there guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video on Nashville Vlogs. Um, today is another maze review from Fort Bar Fright Nights. Of course, it's the second upcharge maze and what is, in my opinion, the better one of the two. As you can see by the title of this video, of course, it's Roots of Evil. So just to give you a little bit of a backstory to Roots of Evil, uh, Roots of Evil this year replaced uh, the Blair Witch Maze, which had been in the park for quite a few years on and off. Uh, it was at Fort Park Fright Nights from 2013 until 2016. Then it took a year out and then came back for the 2018 and 19 season. And this year, Roots of Evil has taken over uh, that sort of area of the park, as well as uh, utilising the jungle escape sort of area. So obviously, as with the Platform 15 review, um, this was a £10 upcharge maze. Uh, and of course, there will be spoilers going ahead. So um, yeah, I think we're going to go straight into it. So when I did it, uh, you sort of, their queuing system was quite weird. Because you'd queue up along the fence, just outside the compound. Uh, sort of where the Dead Creek Woods finale was, so you queue up along that fence there, which is on the main path going past um, Wilderness Bar and Kitchen and heading up towards um, Old Town. So you queue up along there to start with, and then, then you get your ticket scanned at the Jungle Escape uh, queue line entrance, and then after you've had your ticket scanned, you then go for a temporary queue line area, which has been set up in the compound. So you cut, you go into the jungle escape queue to then cut through a hole in the fence to go through a load of temporary queue line that doesn't really need to be there, to then go through another hole in the fence near near to where the hole in the fence was where you used to go into the uh, Blair Witch pre-show before going through the rest of the jungle escape queue line before having your ticket scanned again before queuing on the little ramp outside Jungle Escape's pre-show. So it was a really weird queuing system and it felt like you kept going over and over again. You know, it, it was just insane. So just like with Platform 15, you go in uh, in your household. So for me, uh, I pretty much got off basically alone because I was the only one in my group. Uh, just like with Platform, I did it solo. And you wait outside, uh, there's a staff member who waits outside the door. They were sending these groups in pretty quick. Uh, I think there was a group going in every like 45 to 60 seconds, so maybe a little bit slower than platform. But I think it worked out better. And then when you went into the pre-show, uh, you'd go into the old Jungle Escape uh, pre-show room, which has sort of been adapted to uh, fit in with the theme. So um, the pictures, uh, credit to Theme Park Guide, that you see on your screen, these are from press night, uh, and the maze did end up changing by the final night when I did it. So when you go in, you meet this sort of research person, I, I think that's the best way to put it, like a research scientist, uh, and they tell you about this plant, uh, these plants uh, that have sort of taken over the forest. I'm not gonna lie, I was getting creepy caves unearthed vibes from this maze. Like just the story alone, I was getting creepy caves vibes, which isn't a good thing when this is supposed to be an, or an original concept maze and it has a very similar look and feel to uh, creepy caves, which, yeah. Um, and then obviously uh, within the um, Jungle Escape pre-show building, there's now some of the old props from the escape room containment. Now, I'm just going to say this now. For those who think just because the containment props are in the jungle escape building, that's, that automatically means that containment isn't going to come back. That's not true. Because there's been mazes in the past where there's props from previous mazes in the past in that maze. And said maze has ended up coming back with the same props as normal the next year. 
they've only put the containment props in there to fit in with the theme. I can, I will genuinely eat my hat if containment doesn't come back next year. Um, but when we were in there, the TV screen in the pre-show uh, was now showing like a sort of a CCTV feed, which showed like uh, these creatures um, attacking the camera, which really set up the atmosphere. Um, and these creatures that you see end up being in the forest uh, and they actually were hiding in bushes, which gave me a few scares. So after that, you then walk down the corridor towards this fire exit down the back of the Jungle Escape building, where you meet another scientist who tells you that um, the research that they've been taking out is strictly confidential and that you have to give your full compliance to them. Um, and then they gave you a code word uh, to go to the military. Uh, that's another thing they mentioned, is that the military have locked down the area, so <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you go out the fire exit and you sort of go, those who uh, in the jungle escape queue line, you sort of where the fence all goes in, that's where you are. So you sort of walk out the jungle escape building and you then go into a tent, which is actually the containment tent. Uh, and when you go in there, there's some props, there's some lighting, there's some computers. Uh, quite interestingly, there's um, there's like a whiteboard, as you can see, and it. I did notice a few. Um, I did notice a few sort of um, references to the event this year in that. So, um, for example, um, as you can see, it all says Alpha. Most of them says Alpha. Uh, that I think is a reference to the Alphas in Lycan Four Pi. Uh, you've also got a Crow's Nest. Uh, you've got Captain Campbell, uh, Forest Base Alpha, who's currently missing in action. Uh, you've also got Crow's Nest, which I think is a reference to uh, the crows. You know, you've got all these uh, cameras and stuff. And then after that, you go in. Uh, you go out this tent and you're in like a sort of a compound area and you, you meet a military person. Uh, and there's some toilet blocks there, which I thought quite funny. Uh, you give the military person the code word and you go around uh, where the tent is. This is actually where the uh, Blair Witch pre-show from previous years were. So you go around uh, and the theming in this area is pretty cool. I like the theming. Then you go out and you start heading down towards where the uh, entrance to the old Blair Witch extension was last year. Uh, there's like these sort of big fences with barbed wire and caution tape there. Um, you walk past them. I got another good jump scare on the corner, an actor jumped out. And then you start making your way down into the Blair Witch extension. So you literally go in the door where the Blair Witch extension was last year. So you head on down. Uh, there's some new lighting in there. It's more greens. Uh, when we were in there, the bushes started moving, uh, which I found quite interesting. And then you sort of turn the corner and you see this sort of like, you see this like car. Now, interestingly, the car headlights that you see um, in this little start of the woodland area is actually from uh, the Walking Dead Living Nightmare. So the Walking Dead Living Nightmare technically has made its way into two different attractions at Fright Nights this year. It made its way into Roots of Evil and it also made its way into Creek Freaks Unchained. Uh, so then after that you head up through the rest of the Blair Witch Extension uh, and you get a jump scare by one of the creatures. Uh, I found this absolutely funny. They caught me off guard as well. Uh, but yeah, and then you head on up towards uh, the first of the Blair Witch structures. So a, a lot of the Blair Witch uh, sort of like sets uh, have been reused uh, and you go into the first sort of shed uh, those who remember with Blair Witch it used to have like handprints on the wall now it's completely black walls you go down and there's a smoke machine outside with some lighting normally uh, there's like actors on the left when I went through there was an actor literally sort of climbing on the shed to the right and sort of jumped down 
uh, and that was quite a good scare. Um, and they sort of tell you to stay away from the trees. Um, yeah, and then you continue going through the rest of the Blair Witch uh, route. And then when you go through this, you encounter the other actors who have got face masks and UV lighting on them. And you, you pretty much go through the rest of the Blair Witch route. This is the only bit I think that I didn't feel like it was like Blair Witch again. That's the thing with Roots of Evil. There were certain moments where I genuinely still thought I was walking through the woods of Burkittsville uh, from Blair Witch. And, I f and it, it was weird. You know, the first half, it felt like Blair Witch. And then the second half didn't feel like Blair Witch. Um, you sort of go around and then you go past this watchtower. I'm not going to lie. I had high expectations for a scene at the Watchtower, and I felt like the Watchtower was underused this year. Hopefully, if Roots of Evil come back next year, they might use the Watchtower to a bit more. Uh, it was good. Good couple of little lighting things. Uh, the actor was shouting you to keep your masks on. Uh, and then you go through the little crawl section as you come up towards uh, the finale, which is in the Blair Witch Shed. Uh, but before that, you have to go through like a little cool section and then a little duck down section where normally there was an actor there. When we went through, there wasn't an actor there. Um, obviously, they've done really well um, changing it around from the Blair Witch finale. Um, you go in, one of the scares in the finale was ruined because um, one of the actors sort of moved away from their position just as I was about to walk in. So I sort of saw them come in and then they tried to hide and it. It just ruined the scare. You get like a little sort of jump scare bit there. And then following that, you go into the main part of the finale where we had two actors. There was one who was sort of trapped in the roof, which was a really good scare. And then there was one jumping out from the corner, making loads of noise like in Blair Witch. So that was quite fun. And then you sort of went out, went into this sort of camo sort of undergrowth sort of area. Uh, and then you exit during the Nemesis Inferno uh, exit path, just like in Blair Witch. And that was it. Um, Roots of Evil lasted about six minutes. So it was just, it was slightly shorter than uh, Platform. Platform was about seven or eight minutes. This one was about five or six minutes. So, but it did feel longer than Blair Witch, to be honest. It felt longer than Blair Witch. I don't know whether that was just because there was like, Three groups in front going really slow, and then there was a group behind me going really. No, there was two groups in front going really fast, and one group going really slow. So it was. One thing I will say: social distancing, wise, Roots of Evil was the better maze for social distancing, in my opinion, and it, it's shocking that that happened. Um, I think, in my opinion, I think Roots of Evil has got is. I think Roots of Evil is going to be one of those mazes that will come back next year. Now, the question that someone asked me was, um, do you think out of the two upcharge mazes, do you think the upcharge mazes from this year could work under, in the way they are, under non-upcharge uh, situations? Platform, we all know it could operate under um, non-upcharge reasons. But Roots... There's certain elements of Roots of Evil that I think wouldn't be able to work post-COVID. Um, but no, for they um, sort those issues out uh, when they come up. And then the next question is, was Roots of Evil worth the £10 upcharge? Yes. Compared to Platform, this was worth 100% the £10. You know, the scares were consistent. Apart from that one that was ruined in the finale, it was like consistent scares. And I and I, I really hope Roots of Evil comes back in 2021 for the 20th anniversary. I think they can definitely improve on it next year. I think I think they'll definitely improve on it following this year. And I think Roots of Evil has been more successful. I know when I said this on uh, on the night, saying that Roots of Evil was a better maze, everyone's saying that's controversial, but I think it was. It was just I think operations was better on this as well in my opinion. But yeah, that is um, my review of Roots of Evil. Let you let me know, guys. Did you do Roots of Evil? Did you enjoy it? Which one did you prefer? Did you prefer Platform 15 or Roots of Evil? And also, would you like to see Roots of Evil return for 
for the 20th anniversary in 2021. Anyway, guys, I've been Nasha. This has been another video on Nasha Vlogs. Stay safe during this lockdown. Guys, I will see you in the next video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get to 400 by 2021. Peace out.